Hello, everyone. I'm Edmund from Fiful, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to my upcoming video course on the fundamentals of capital markets. Throughout this course, we will be diving deep into the main capital investment activities and valuation techniques, comparing debt financing with equity financing, explaining the process of mergers and acquisitions, and outlining the capital raising process. Our focus throughout this course will be to provide you with a solid understanding of the key concepts and principles that underpin capital markets. By the end of this course, you will have a comprehensive understanding of capital investment activities, valuation techniques, debt financing and equity financing, mergers and acquisitions, and the capital raising process. You'll be equipped with the knowledge and tools to make informed investment decisions and achieve your financial goals. I'm looking forward to embarking on this journey with you and helping you deepen your understanding of the fascinating world of capital markets. The primary goal of professionals who work in corporate finance is to maximize the value of their businesses by effectively planning and implementing their resources while balancing risk and profitability. Corporate finance activities can be classified into three categories. Firstly, capital investments, which require managers to carefully evaluate and choose the most profitable projects to invest in or the best businesses to acquire. Their aim is to achieve the highest possible risk-adjusted return on these investments. Secondly, capital financing, which involves optimizing the firm's capital structure to obtain the lowest possible cost of capital. Finally, there is the decision of whether to return capital to investors through dividends or other means if there are no profitable investment opportunities. In corporate finance, the capital markets consist of two sides corporations and institutions that represent investors. Corporations are operating companies that require capital to grow and run their operations, while investors have money they want to invest in these companies. Capital flows from investors into corporations, and corporations issue bonds or shares in exchange. Facilitating these transactions is the investment bank, also known as the sell side, which brokers the deals to raise capital and issue shares back to investors using its relationships and contacts on both sides. Additionally, public accounting firms are involved in auditing and preparing financial statements for these corporations, which are used by institutional investors. To summarize, there are four key players in corporate finance. Corporations that need capital, institutions that represent investors with money, investment banks that broker transactions between corporations and investors, and public accounting firms that oversee the financial information. These players operate in the primary market, where new shares and bonds are issued by corporations. Moving on to the secondary market, additional institutional investors or fund managers want to buy securities of publicly traded companies, while some fund managers may want to sell their positions in those companies. Investors buy and sell on a stock exchange or over the counter using investment banks that have sales and trading departments, as well as equity research departments that facilitate transactions between investors. Unlike the primary market, where corporations issue new securities, the secondary market involves transactions happening solely between investors. This is why it's called the secondary market, as the corporations that issued the shares aren't involved. Investors seek assistance from investment banks to buy and sell shares in already publicly traded companies. Let's take a closer look at the different types of participants in the capital markets. As previously mentioned, we have two main categories, investors and corporations. Investors can be further classified into two categories, retail and institutional. Retail investors are individuals, including high net worth individuals, while institutional investors include mutual funds, pension funds, private equity firms, venture capital firms, and angel investors. Institutional investors may represent individual investors as well. On the other hand, corporations can be broadly classified into two types, public companies and private companies. Public companies are listed on a stock exchange and can be traded by anyone, 
While private companies are owned and traded by a limited number of individual or institutional investors. Let's explore the various types of transactions that can take place between the different participants in capital markets. The first is an initial public offering, or IPO, which occurs when a company issues securities to the public for the first time. Follow-on equity offerings refer to instances when companies return to public markets to raise additional funds. Private placements, on the other hand, involve companies raising money through private channels. Mergers and acquisitions involve one company purchasing another, while leverage buyouts refer to a type of acquisition where a company uses a significant amount of leverage to acquire another business with minimal equity. Finally, divestist you occurs when a company sells off a business. It's essential to be familiar with these different types of participants and transactions that take place in the capital markets as we progress through this course. Don't miss my next video. In it, we'll be diving deep into the world of capital investments and exploring all the ways that managers can make savvy investment decisions to maximize the value of their businesses. Trust me, this is a video you won't want to miss. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked what you saw and want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel.